Welcome to the next video in the systems programming video series. We are now moving on to the third part of the uh, assignment number five, where we're going to return to working with these PPM files. And so in this one, we're going to implement a new version of readppm.c, implements a modified version of your PPM reader from the previous assignment that reads PPM in binary format rather than ASCII format. In raw format, the header information is still ASCII, so just as before, although the magic number is now P6. The pixel data is in binary format. Use fread to read in the pixels. Use test ppmc to, again, test that your reader is working. So you make the test. Note that making the test, it's already set up in the make file so that that uh, attaches the uh, read ppm.c uh, as a sort of uh, library file. Uh, but it builds to the executable test ppm, so you run the executable test PPM, and it should tell you a little bit about the file, but then print out the, um, the data that was in the file. So in particular here, if you gave it the FEEP raw, whatever that means, uh, but let's come over to the FEEP raw. So this is P6. Uh, right, that's the type. This is a comment that should get skipped over. This is the dimension information so that it's a four by four pixel map. The maximum color number is 225 for any single value of red or green or blue. And then there is the binary data. And so it you know, renders in this kind of unreadable way. I kind of wish it would just render as the direct binaries. I'd kind of looked around to see if I couldn't make it simply display the raw binaries, but um, uh, it wasn't worth digging into that too much. So I didn't uh, put a lot of effort into it. So anyway, we'll just look at it like this. I mean, I think we can somewhat intuitively tell that this initial null is simply a sequence of zeros, right? That is a byte of all zeros. And the next thing is a byte of all zeros. And the next thing is a byte of all zeros. And the next thing is a byte which encodes the number for the char D. You know, I, I think uh, we might even be able to come back and look at, because I think this is basically, yeah, it should be the same. Uh, yeah, so that would be a byte of all zeros, a byte of all zeros, a byte of all zeros, and then 100, which I think, right, um, what did we see the lowercase letter A's uh, encoding was? I thought it was like a 90 something. So maybe, I, I can't remember exactly. But in any case, 100 probably in bytes gets, you know, is, is represented by, by some binary sequence, or, you know, like we could basically take the decimal value of 100, translate that into binary, and that binary code is stored here in a single byte, uh, which is to say eight bits. And then that, that binary code in this text editor that just comes default with VS code is choosing to show that to me as the ASCII character D. So anyway, that's what this file has in it. Uh, since I'm already getting kind of talkative, then uh, I'll probably try to not do the whole assignment right now. Uh, right, I'll basically just introduce the assignment and maybe talk a little bit about the first few things to do and then split this into two videos so it doesn't get too long. Anyway, okay. Now, I think it's worth noting that over here, we have I th what I think is a slight change to the old uh, header file. So if you look at the old header file from assignment four, our struct PPM was just this right here. The new uh, header file, which is down here, is now a struct PPM pixel, but it is fundamentally a union of two different uh, structs basically and the idea of a union is mostly that you know any two things in a union point to the same location in memory often i think that is so that if a single piece of memory could be typed in two different ways like think about how an int is four bytes 
but a single a, a char is a single byte and they both fundamentally at the level of hardware are simply represented by some binary code and so in a way you could kind of regard any int as kind of like you know at the binary level equivalent to some sequence of four chars so then you could sort of put them in a union structure. And it's not to say that any two things in a union structure always have to have the same size, but that's kind of like a typical idea is that like some two types at the binary level could have the same binary representation. And so if you want, like if, if you wanted to sometimes regard it as one type and sometimes regard it as a different type, depending on a particular thing that you need at any given moment in your program, and then a union allows you to kind of switch back and forth between the two uh, sort of typing a uh, uh, type system for each uh, you know operation or whatever you need at a given moment. So anyway, but the long story short is that uh, here we have three uh, unsigned chars, uh, red, green, blue. They're in a single struct, and that struct should not, in principle, really need much more information than just these. Uh, three chars. Well, we are simultaneously typing the exact same thing as an array of three unsigned chars. So, you know, effectively they are equivalent to each other, that, that these two things are going to point to the same location in memory. And so I can treat it either as a struct if I wanted to, or as a simple array if I wanted to. And I think in my implementation, you'll actually see one place where I treat it like one thing and another place where I treat it like the other thing, demonstrating the utility of a union structure. Okay, but in any case, uh, the main upshot for us right now, because we're talking about the read part where I read in the file and construct an array of pixels, the main thing that's important for us is that I am going to treat it like a char array of uh, three, right, three chars. And you'll see in a minute why that's important. So, okay. So let's come over here to the read PPM file. And, uh, you know, I am uh, including things that I may need at some point. I'm also going to just here so that I can like set it in one location. I think the max line length should be 256, right? Basically, because like any line earlier than the data should be shorter than 256 and i think the data itself being stored in binary should never exceed 250 any one line should never exceed 256 either so okay uh so anyway i declare that here if i want if i change my mind or uh, you know found bad behavior or something like that at any point i could redefine it just in one place that's the point for doing this sorry i shouldn't be talking well maybe i should be talking through this but i guess you know maybe i should just show you the implementation that i already have made so here i'm just gonna scan and scan and scan and so there is the read uh part here is the write part uh, these are declared as extern, probably that, I don't need to say that, but um, in any case, they're declared as extern so that I can use them in the test uh, file or, or program. Uh, so anyway, here's how I write. And now I'm going to uh, comment all of this out the right. Yeah, I, that's correct. So I should not return anything in the right function. Okay, so I'm going to comment all of this out. And for now, um, so, oh yeah, that's right. It, it returns void, so I don't even need to return anything. So that's fine. Uh, here, because I'm going to comment this out, then I should maybe go ahead and return uh, null until I get uh, the rest of it implemented. That way I can at least compile and see if at any point uh, what I've written compiles. So, uh, so we're implementing the read part as we have already seen a couple different times we're going to uh, get ourselves a, a you know a file pointer object so that we can start reading in the file so that means that i want a file star i'm going to call it fp equals f open file name and then uh, somewhat importantly because we're going to be reading this as a binary file then we say read right the r is for read but the B is for binary so that it reads it as a binary file. Okay, 
now, as soon as I open this, I want to check to make sure that everything went okay. Uh, the instructions, oh, I should probably maybe like talk through or point out the rest of what is in the instructions. So use RB, uh, use F read. So this is going to be important, right? F read is a way of simply saying, read in this many bytes, right? You'll see where we, um, you know, specify the number of bytes in a little bit. But um, so we do have to use a different function than we used previously. And that you will see probably in the next video. I don't think I'm going to get to it in this video. But in the next video, you'll see where I actually have to redesign some of how I did the reading from the, like I can't just copy what I did in the previous way of reading in the file because uh, certain functions cooperate, right? Like, you know, if I want to try to grab things line by line, I don't think I can use F scan F or something like that because it doesn't cooperate well with F read, I believe. Uh, at least I think that's why I was getting some bugs when I designed this the first time. So in any case, so, so I got rid of all the uses of like F scan F or whatever, and instead replaced them all with F read S, which seemed to work. So, uh, so in any case, because we're using F read, we do have to redesign things slightly. Uh, if you need to modify the function signature, just be careful to, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, okay. So there's the general description of the assignment. And, and by the way, I guess I should point out the kind of the point of doing this, you know, since we've already done it one time with ASCII, why are we doing it now with binary? I mean, to some degree, you might think that it's uh, to, to simply do more exercises using binary. But I think it's also somewhat to make a case, right? I think, uh, well, what you'll see at the end of implementing the read uh, function is that by reading the data in binary, the file is much more condensed, right? Like, you know, this is just a smaller file, this uh, F, uh, FEEP raw or whatever, because all you're storing is raw binary data, as opposed to what you get in FEEP ASCII, which is the same information, but, but like this right here being a char is already, you know, the, like equivalent to a single byte that you would see in the raw file, but then there's spaces, there are uh, line breaks at the end of each line. And uh, so, you know, in any case, the, the basic point is that, you know, this has at least a certain amount of chaff that is not strictly necessary. And so uh, a raw, uh, you know, raw binary, you know, requires a bit less uh, storage, which is nice, especially when you're sending files over the internet, you want to be pretty uh, lean in sending only necessary information. So that's one thing. But for another thing, you know, essentially by having this as binary data, there's a very simple command to simply just like take an entire, like basically F read can take this entire block of binary data and move it into your program all in a single block so that you don't have to process each char, right? Like, you know, you saw in our previous implementation that to manage the ASCII, I had to kind of like process the ASCII, but when it's in binary, like in a sense, you basically, this is all, because it is binary, it is almost literally the code that I want stored in my variables. Just, it's already the raw code. It takes no processing. So not only, is it leaner for you know storage and data transfer, but also the command is much simpler. It's simply a one line command. It takes no processing of the ASCII and it's faster uh, as well because it takes no processing of the ASCII. So anyway, so I think, right, like I just wanted to kind of discuss why I think we are doing this, uh, right? Like why are we kind of redoing a thing we've already done, but this time in binary? And I think the answer is that it really teaches you something important about the virtue of working with binaries. So uh, getting back to this, we open the file, if bang FP, right? That basically means if something went wrong, then say, uh, oh, and uh, uh, the instructions, I believe, somewhere uh, indicated that if the file cannot be found or whatever, something goes wrong, then you should just return null. Okay, so we have read the file. Now I want to start processing the file, grabbing it basically line by line. So I think I'm going to uh, initialize a char line uh, max line length, right? So that is going to be my initial line. 
And uh, also I'm going to want to basically for, for several different parts of this, I'm going to want to use each line to collect a number. So I'm going to declare an int none that I can use for various purposes throughout the program. Um, I probably need to initialize it because it's going to get populated by its address. Anyway, you'll see uh, later on. But so I have these things and maybe I'll just grab the first line, process the first line and uh, end the video there. We'll pick up uh, the rest in the next video. So to get the first line, we can simply use f get s. And I give it the line where I would like the destination of the file line to go. So that's this variable line. And then what else does this need? It needs an int n, which is um, right, the maximum number of chars to read at any given point. I think I'm just going to say size of line, just because like, you know, you, you read only as many characters as there is space in this variable, which uh, is surely more than I need, but um, but also is surely safe. And then I give it the file pointer. Okay, so now my line here should contain the first line of the file. It should be P6, but let's just print it to make sure that it is what I think that it is. So that would be percent %s coming from line. And if this works, then we'll pick this up on the next video. So I'm going to make read uh, PPM. No, make uh, test PPM. Uh, it doesn't like something. Oh, unused variable, which, uh, right, and I disabled uh, crashing on errors. So that's fine. I'll, I will use that variable later, uh, and then the warning will go away. In the meantime, we can do dot slash make test. Oh, right. But I never did implement any part of the test file. So you can see here's the implementation. I won't like there's just so little to write that it's pointless to to. Um, ooh, but I am noticing that this is not great because I uh, create the uh, thing, but then I don't uh, uh, free it up after. So what I should do is say uh, struct. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, PPM pixel pointer. I'm going to call it the pix map, and that should be this. And then I should, at the end, at least for now, I'm simply going to immediately free it all up. Right? We'll we'll use it in different ways later, but for now, I just want to see the print that I put in the read uh, source code. So, uh, pix map null that out. I've freed everything that I have allocated. I've nulled my pointer, so I think I'm okay now. And now I should be able to, so I should go back and make again. Ooh, I did this in the wrong, oh, that was in A4, which, okay, which means back in A4, I had a mistake, but, um, but we should come over here, come to my test file. Um, okay, right, and okay, here's where I'm like printing a whole bunch of stuff out and blah, blah, blah. But um, so we don't need to worry about the printing. I did this time remember to free stuff up. But for now, I'm just going to eliminate that. Yeah, there, it should return null anyway. So um, not that it matters, but okay. So anyway, so I think this is what I want. And now I should make, and that looks right. And so now I should run test. And I am doing this right. I have basically hard-coded feep raw here. So, um, so I'll go ahead and just test it like that. P6, OK, so that's exactly the expected behavior. OK, so I think we have uh, gotten an introduction and a warm-up to this assignment. But the video is long. Let's pick it up later.